common house with the community, covered in solar panels. Oh wow, look how big this place is. A lot more houses over there. This little neighborhood. This is a cool neighborhood. This is John with Frequency555.com. We're here with Liz Walker of Eco Village at Ithaca. When I think of Eco Villages, I generally think of about five points. And one of them is green building, one of them is alternative energy, one of them is uh, local food production, particularly organic food. Um, one of them is creating a strong sense of community, and one of them is doing hands-on education. So, in terms of Eco Village at Ithaca, we are demonstrating green building through a number of uh, ways. One is in our two existing co-housing neighborhoods, we have a very small footprint on the land. So 30 homes on, that are densely clustered, the actual building footprint is about an acre and a half. Okay. Compared to the previous developer who was going to develop this land and use one acre per house. We also have passive solar homes. Um, all of our homes and our community centers, also called common houses, face due south uh, to let in the light of the sun and also the heat of the sun. They're also super insulated homes and so typically our heating bills are somewhere between 40 to 60 percent less than other homes in the Ithaca area of a similar size. In our third neighborhood, which we're just planning now and which we plan to start building probably in the next couple of months, um, is going to use a cutting edge green building technology from Europe, which is called Passive House. Walls are much thicker. In a passive house, they're usually about a foot and a half thick, filled with insulation. And every single seam is completely taped up, so you have an airtight envelope, okay. which is hard to do, um, but that's an essential part of the design. Then, because you really you want to keep getting fresh air, right. um, you have to have what they call a heat recovery ventilator. Right. And what that does is it continuously ventilates uh, the house and allows fresh air to come in. The energy engineer that we're working with said that if you turn on one burner on a stove, you could essentially heat a three bedroom house that really? is built to these specs. Another aspect of an eco village is using alternative energy sources. So I mentioned the passive solar quality. We also have active solar. Uh, if you look on our common house here, you'll see photovoltaic panels all over the roof, and that powers the electricity in this building. Um, however, we also have a lot of our homes have PV panels, and many of them produce all their electricity that they use. And then we have some active solar hot water heating systems. So we're looking at a solar hot water um, district heating system. So we'll have solar hot water panels on the roof of the common house of tree, and then we'll circulate that hot water yeah, that throughout the neighborhood. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about local food and farming, which we're pretty big on. We have 175 acres of land here, and right now we're actively farming 15 acres in two small-scale organic farms. So one farm has been around since we purchased the land here in 1992. Uh, West Haven Farm, which is a 10-acre farm, is run by Jen and John Borker smith who live here, and they feed a thousand people a week in the Ithaca area uh, during the growing season. So that's late May through early November and they do it through a combination of what's called a community-supported agriculture farm, which means that people, essentially it's a win-win partnership between farmers and consumers. So the consumers put in money at the beginning of the growing season. In our case, it's, I think their sliding scale is 350 to 
$5 for the season, depending on what you can afford. And then during the growing season, the consumer gets you know, a big bag of freshly picked organic produce every week. So you get whatever's in season and it's really fresh and really delicious. Um, so they sell half their produce about to the CSA and then about half of it to the local farmer's market. Okay. And Ithaca has a terrific farmer's market, one of the best in the country. Great. And then we have a five acre berry farm which another uh, person, Katie Krieger, who lives in our second neighborhood farms, and it has, she's up to about 10 kinds of berries. Oh yeah? Another word, 10 kinds of <laughs> <laughs> And we're also, through our nonprofit organization, Eco Village of Ithaca Center for Sustainability Education, for which I serve as the executive director, we also have a very robust um, program which we've just recently started called Groundswell and this is a program which uh, really focuses on training young people how to be farmers. So it includes a lot of hands-on experience at our own farms but then also different farms in the area and uh, we have contracted with the local community college so people can take an eight-week course during the summer and get six uh, credits from the college and they learn business skills they learn um, how to prepare local foods they do a, their own lunch every day uh, with whatever's in season you mentioned the fourth thing that you believe makes an eco village an eco village yeah. is a um, strong sense of community. Yes. Yes. yes, we are doing it here partly through the kind of housing that we chose to do. This is, um, we have two neighborhoods and soon to be a third neighborhood that uses co-housing principles. And co-housing is a specific subset of community which uses the Danish model of community-oriented housing in which there's a blend of privacy and community. So it's a, a master plan community in which people own their own homes, um, or in our case, because we're a co-op, they own shares in the co-op that relate to a particular home. But then the, the homes are in a community in which we share several meals a week. We are uh, very actively engaged with our neighbors. We make decisions using consensus. And we try to get to know each other. So um, many of us have been involved in this project for the last 19 years. So we've seen our kids grow up together. We've seen you know, people have died, people have gotten married, people have gotten divorced. You really get to know people over time. Children, uh, let's yeah. talk about education a bit. What really fires me up and, and a lot of people who live here is figuring out ways that we can get the word out about what we're doing. So that includes education on many different levels. On the one hand, uh, right now, we have a homeschool group that's meeting in the Common House um, that includes kids from this community, but also from the broader Ithaca area. Uh, but on the other hand, um, most of our kids go to the local public schools. We have one of our members who lives here started a new public school, a new public high school oh, called really? New Roots. And it's a sustainability-oriented public high school downtown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And oh my God, she's worked so hard. To I make bet it, it happen. can't be you to start <laughs> an entire school. Um, and we run workshops, weekend workshops, day-long workshops, week-long workshops, and those are usually for adults of all ages rather than children. And the basic concept is to help people learn about living more sustainably and uh, how to create communities and I don't mean just living communities but how to take some of the lessons that we're learning here and apply them in their own lives whether it's you know living in an apartment building in the city or whether it's being out you know in a rural area there's there's a lot of applicability yeah. there's power in numbers you can do a lot more when you have a group of people working yeah. together than you can individual.